All right, so we're going to be moving on to a new kind of hypothesis test. And uh, so before we actually discuss how this works, let's look at the scenario here. So basically, you think you're a pretty good uh, player at hearts on your, on your iPad, and you want to actually test to see if really you're that good. So you play the game 60 times, and of those times, you finish in first uh, 22 times, second 19 times, third 12, and fourth place seven different times. And you're kind of wondering, is that, is that good? So the question really is, is, is this strong evidence here that your results are different from just plain old random luck where you, know, you just kind of happen to do this well? Or, or is it really special or just kind of within the realm of what you kind of expect? So in this case here, because we're looking at four different ways you can finish, either first, second, third, or fourth, we're going to use a different kind of test. And what this test is called is called a chi-squared test. And chi is a Greek letter, and it looks like this over here. So basically, it just kind of looks like an X kind of over here. So that's what a chi is, and it's chi squared. And we use this any time we do something called, we're going to use categorical variables. So in this case here, the categorical, or categorical variable is what place you finish in. So I'm going to write your place here. So either you finish in first, second, third, or fourth. And we know that it was 22, 19, 12, and 7 for a total of 60 times. Now, the other thing you should know about these chi-squared tests is, is that there's no confidence intervals involved. It's always just a hypothesis test. So thinking about this here, if, if you want to see if you're really any good, what you would expect is, is that you would expect that if it was just total randomness here involved, that you would finish in first 25% of the time, 25% of the time you finish in second, and so forth and so on for third and fourth. So just be evenly distributed among the four different places here. And 25% of 60 is 15. So you would expect to finish 15 times in first, if you played 16 times, 15 in second, 15 in third, and finally 15 in fourth. And obviously, you can see here, well, you know, 22 is better than 15, and so is 19, whereas 12 and 7 are lower, which is what you want to have happen. But is it really significantly lower? Or is it just kind of, you know, it's, it's better than what you expect by randomness, but really not that impressive? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to state the hypotheses. And what the hypotheses are in this case here, we say them in words. So our null hypothesis is going to be that your results are actually evenly distributed. So results are evenly distributed. So in other words, you know, it's, it's 15 in each category here. We have 15 first place finishes, et cetera, et cetera. And the alternate hypothesis would be the opposite. So what's the opposite of evenly distributed? It would be the results are not evenly distributed. And so in this case here, we're just saying it in words. We're not, we don't have any uh, symbols or anything here. It's just they either are evenly distributed or they're not. And what we need to do, which I've already kind of written up there, is we want to be able to compare numbers with numbers. And so although we know the expected percentage is 25%, that helps us set up our expected number, but we're not going to actually use the percentages at all in this test. What we're going to do is we're going to compare what actually happened for first place versus what we expected to have happened, and do the same thing for second, third, and fourth. So that's really how the test is going to work here. We're going to compare numbers. And we also do not use the totals either. The totals set up things, but we're not going to actually use them. So hypotheses done, and we have our observed number, and we have our expected number, and it's our categorical variable of place, either first place, second place, third place, or fourth place. So on to the conditions. First condition is, is this a random or a representative sample? So in this case here, we'd argue that, hey, playing these 60 times is just a representative sample of how we would play any time we played hearts. I wouldn't really call it random, but definitely representative here. Um, also, we have counts in this case here. We don't have percentages. We don't have averages. We have counts, actual counts of how many we have here of a categorical variable. That's our second condition here. And once again, what is the category variable in this case here? It is your finish. And then there are four categories within that, first, second, third, or fourth. And then the final one is, it's called expected counts are all greater than five. So in this case, we had expected counts that were all 15. So obviously, that is greater than five. And just by showing them in a chart like this, you've shown evidence that the expected counts are all greater than 5 because we, in, we wrote in 15, 15, 15, and 15. 
And this is what we call a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And actually, there are three different chi-squared tests, and, and this is just the first of three. But well, like I said, it's called chi-squared goodness of fit, and we'll worry about the, the other two another day. Next up, we're actually going to do the math here. So what I've done is I've, I've taken that table that we created on, on our first page here and just recreated it over here so it's, it's easy and handy here. And to do this here, we use this formula here of chi squared is sigma, and then we have this stuff here in parentheses here. So sigma means we're going to add up, and it's going to be observed minus expected, that difference squared divided by expected. And once again, we're not dealing with percentages here. We're only dealing with the actual counts. So here's how it works. We're going to write chi squared equals. We observed 22 and we expected 15. So we'd write 22 minus 15 and that quantity squared. And we expected 15. So 15 goes on the bottom. Now you do it for second place. We observed 19. We expected 15. We take that quantity squared and divide by 15. And you keep doing this here. We do it now for third place. 12 divided by, I'm sorry, 12 minus 15 quantity squared, all over 15. And then finally, we have 7 minus 15 quantity squared, all over 15. And so you take your calculator, and you can do some of this in your head right now. For instance, this difference is 7, so we would take 7 squared divided by 15. Then we would take, well, 19 minus 15 is 4, so it would be 4 squared divided by 15. 12 minus 15, that's a difference of 3, and we're going to square, so we can just write 3. And then the fourth one, the difference between 7 and 15 would be 8, so it would be 8 squared over 15. So you would take your calculator, do all the math here, and you come up with a value of 9.2. So the question is, is this chi-squared value of 9.2, is that really something that's um, you know extraordinary, or is it just kind of, a, kind of within the realm of what we'd kind of expect to have happen if it was just pure random luck? So as it turns out, when we're dealing with chi-squared tests here, it's actually not a normal curve. It's actually, anytime we have a chi-squared one, it's going to be a skewed right curve. And so this is a chi-squared, and it always starts at 0 here on the far left. And the reason why is, if all of these matched exactly and were exactly 15, the lowest chi-squared value possible is 0. It's impossible to get a negative number because we're taking a difference and squaring it. So we'll always either get a positive number or 0 at the, at the absolute least here. So we start at 0, and then somewhere over here is 9.2. And we want to know what part of the curve, what area is underneath this part of the curve right here. Well, we also need to know this. If we have four different categories here with, within this here, I'm sorry, four different uh, possibilities within our, our, our category here, we're going to have degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom would be n minus 1. And so in this case, it'll be 4 minus 1, because we have four different things that can happen here. And that is 3. So we're going to have degrees of freedom 3. So you want to put a little 3 over here to indicate degrees of freedom. And so finally, the last thing you have to do here is we need to calculate the p-value. And so this is how you do the p-value. It's the probability that chi-squared degrees of freedom 3 is greater than 9.2. So we're not going to be using a normal curve here because it's a chi-squared curve, and we're not going to use a t-curve either. So when you grab your, your calculator, you want to find this. Find normal CDF and t-CDF, but we're going to use chi-squared CDF. So this is what you actually do on the calculator. Chi-squared CDF is going to be 9.2, and then and use a really big number, like, for instance, 999. So something really extreme out there, and then comma degrees of freedom is 3. So if you grab your calculator and do chi-squared CDF 9.2 comma 999 comma 3, you're going to get this answer as your p-value, 0.027. So that's our p-value in this case here, 0.027. So that's it. That's how the test works. It's always the same thing. It's a series of fractions added together. That's what sum means here. We're going to add together. And it's observed minus expected divided by expected. And I'm sorry, it's observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So now we know our p-value. Uh, usually our burden of proof is uh, we use an alpha of 5%. And this is lower than that, so we're going to go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. So here's our final conclusion here. We reject HO since p is less than 5%. There is strong evidence. 
of something going on here. So it, what is it strong evidence of? It's strong evidence that our alternate hypothesis is true. So it's, there is strong evidence here that your finish, your heart's results, how you finish that is in hearts, are not evenly distributed. In other words, it looks like, yeah, you are doing significantly different from what you would expect if it was just pure random luck. So that's how you do a chi-square goodness of fit test.